All right, YouTube. I had a couple hours left of sunlight. I snuck away for a little bit. Thought maybe I would do a bow drill friction fire. I'll be looking for tulip poplar. And I'll be using that for pretty much every part of the bow drill. There's one there, and there's a massive one right there. So I'm sure some branches have fallen down around here. You can see that's nice and dry. We'll be able to use the bark for our tinder bundle. And I'm looking for a nice straight piece. I like the look of this right here for the hearth board. It's actually not a bad looking piece for the spindle either. I think we'll take that back too. Let's see how fibrous the bark is. It's going to be great for a tinder bundle. Alright, we'll get this back and start getting it ready. And start processing this wood into the pieces that I need. For starters, I'm going to take all the bark off. And it just peels off because it's a little damp. So that might make this a little bit harder for starting the fire, but it's good for processing the bark. what we're looking for. It's getting really thin. Kind of work your thumbs in there. I think this is going to be our spindle right here. We'll cut it down to about that length and we want it to be as straight as possible. And I'll have to 
shave down these knots so it's nice and even. barely using any pressure because this is such a soft wood that this knife just carves right through it. Now I'll work on the spindle. And make this end long. This is where I'm gonna put actually a hickory nut that I found. To work as a socket where this is gonna go in. 
we're going to keep this long as it burns down so there's less friction and we're going to keep this end kind of stubby. see it's uneven so I need to do more on these sides. Now for this end, we're just going to take a little bit off at the edges, just so that it fits in that hole we carved out. I like to do that, and then I like to take a little more off this top end. Next, we're going to need to find a bow. I usually like to use a younger hardwood, like hickory. It's still green, so there's a lot of spring to it. This could work right here. I like to leave a little bit of handle behind the curve, something to grip onto. We'll cut it a little bit long for now and I can adjust it later. Okay, now we're back to camp. We're gonna work on our bow. I'm just gonna take a little bit of the end off. It's actually about the right length that I like.
I like to actually carve in a little notch here at the end for hair cord or natural cordage, whatever. Today, I will be using paracord. I like to use a quick little hitching tie. It's got a quick release on it. All I have to do is pull that tag end, and this whole thing will come undone. Figure out about the right tension. And this little knot right here is actually going to be perfect. I don't need to carve a notch in on this end, but I might still just because I like to. That's all I know. I need to tighten it about right there. So I'll take it got it pulled right there and I always take it about a half inch more and then all you do is wrap go across come back over and then just all the way down and before I tie this off I like to check the tension see I already know that's not enough so we're going to come back. I'm going to pull it another half inch. Do the same thing. I like to dress those a little bit tighter. Check the tension again. There we go. I can't quite get it in and that's perfect. I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to take this and I'm going to pinch where there's still tension. Leave a little bit of a loop there. Come around. There you go. Half turn. And then I come back and I do another one. There you go, and that's done. So 
So now, when it comes to loading this bow, because it's green, there's a lot of flex to it. So I'm going to take my spindle, get it to where it's about ready. I'm going to take the top end here, and I'm going to pull it towards myself and give some slack. So I can work that spindle in, and then I can let go, and that is tightly wound. If I let go of that, it's going to kick out over there. So I know this is ready to go. This board is ready for a burn-in, so we're going to set that to the side. Now we need to get our tinder bundle ready. Because this is dry, I can just work it in between my hands and break that outer bark off. And it's going to loosen all of these fibers up. That needs a little bit more. You can see it's still whole. And I can take it all like this and just work it back on itself. That's perfect right there. Now you can use just this much to get a fire going, but you're only going to get a little bit of a flame and you'd have to have either fatwood homemade match ready to go or some really dry kindling that you've got in feather sticks to catch that flame but we're going to get it at least two times this size maybe three times realistically you should probably make it five or six times to make it a full bird's nest soaking wet. stuff is a little bit damp but it'll still light up especially because this is drier I'm gonna put this in the middle Now I personally, I like to make one that's about a quarter size of this when I'm done with my bird's nest to make a sandwich for when I put the coal in here. You kind of bunch it up around the coal and then I take a, a little bit and almost make a sandwich where I can put an angle on it and then start blowing it into both bundles.
this is what I'm going to put on top. All right, I think we're about ready to do a burning. Okay, we can now go ahead and start burning this in on the hearth board. I actually found another hickory nut as a backup that'll work as another socket in case I burn through this one or split it. And I'm gonna use this nice flat leaf to catch the coal whenever I get to that point. I'll go ahead and put it down just in case because I can start catching that dust. That dust is hard earned so you want to keep as much of it as you can around. Load our bow up. Lots of tension. I'm going to hold it right here. I like to keep my thumb right there because if I need to at some point I can adjust tension down or I can start choking up on it and pinching. I don't love how that's sitting right now. I don't want to be pulling it up too much off the ground. All right. All right. Load this in the notch. Nice and slow to start. And you want to kind of angle your bow down so that the paracord or whatever cord you're using isn't rubbing on itself. It'll make it break a lot quicker. And it really pays to use the full length of your bow when you get going. I'm already starting to see a little smoke. Okay. So we've burned our notch in. I'm gonna have to shave these sides down to fit a little better. But we've got to start it, and all that dust collected is what I was talking about. You're going to want to keep that. This end's holding up well. The hickory didn't get any friction really at all. Now it's time to carve in our notch. We're going to carve a V in right here. We're going to go dead center and come over. This is right at half. You're going to go over about a quarter of the way. It's really easy with a saw to go too far. So you want to cut a little and look. We're going to go about a quarter of the way to the center there as well. A little bit more. 
should be about perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing, go at half, come a quarter of the way over, and start our score. Angle the blade a little bit to make the V. not a perfect V but it's gonna be all we need because when you get this notch going and you're spinning you want to make sure there's at least a quarter of that sitting on top of that dust pile that's what keeps that coal hot now we're gonna take the knife and clean up the saw edges because the dust will stick in there Okay, and the last thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to take these edges out and I'm going to carve it in. It's going to look like the bottom of an hourglass. And that is so that there can be more oxygen flow into that dust as it heats up. And it'll help your coal build and stay. Let's see how much wider it is down there at the bottom now. Alright, I think we can start giving this a shot. Always remember to breathe. And when you put this hickory nut down or whatever you're using as your bearing block, you could use hardwood, a stone, a piece of metal, anything that won't have as much friction. You're gonna lock your wrist up against your leg. Okay, here we go. Nice and slow to start just to warm it up. You don't want to run out of energy. Alright, we're going to give it those last hard four seconds. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to wave it with my hand right now because when you're out of breath there's a lot more moisture. So you don't want to start blowing on it right away. Well, we definitely got a coal here. I always take my time at this point because once you know you have a coal, you take care of it like this. You don't have to worry about it going out. I can go ahead and start blowing on it now too.
going to ease it right on top. This is where I take this. I like to sandwich it down. And it helps when you're doing this to actually angle your tinder bundle up so the smoke doesn't get in your face while you're breathing in. Keep blowing on it. And this is when I like to do what I call just closing the TP door. Yes, I lost a rock in the process. Go ahead and take my uh, cooking rock off. 